Super Mario Maker is looking better than ever, and Andre and I had the opportunity to talk to the producer, Mr. Tezuka, and director, Mr. Oshino, at E3 to find out more about the game and its development. So let's get started. Can you please tell us uh, who you are and what you do at Nintendo? My name is I'm Takashi Tezuka. I'm a producer of um, Super Mario Maker, and I've been making games for over 30 years. And I am Hoshino, the director of Super Mario Maker. I'm a programmer, and this is my first time directing. How did the idea for Super Mario Maker come about? What was the inspiration behind the game? We have two points of inspiration, and the first was that I wanted to use Wii U to create a new sort of Mario Paint experience. And so we've been thinking about making another Mario Paint um, for years, but the opportunity never came up. And until one day, the tools team, um, who helps out um, with creating software tools for our level designers, came up with the next generation editor using the Wii U. And so while this is a tools team of making something for other creators, they ended up having so much fun using it themselves that I thought, oh, there must be something here. And, and then somebody proposed that we turn that editor into some sort of game um, experience. And so, you know, I've been thinking about Mario Paint and that came along and I wanted to turn it into something beyond just those two, into something bigger, but that's how it all started. What was it like to revisit the classic Marios after all these years? Well, I believe Mr. Oshino played Super Mario Brothers um, as a kid and grew up with it. And a lot of people on our staff are from his same generation who grew up with Super Mario Bros and are now having kids of their own. And to relive those childhood experiences playing Mario games and being able to share them with their own children was a really uh, great way to experience it for them again. Was it a challenge to incorporate newer Mario characters into the older games at all? That characters that didn't exist in the old games? So yeah, there were some challenges with those designs because we have a lot of really gifted 3D computer graphic designers, but there are not a lot of people who still do pixel art. And to use a limited color palette and few pixels when today you can use it, you can do whatever you want, it took quite a bit of discipline and it was, it was quite a challenge for us. In your digital event today, you showed how you would create levels originally in the old Super Mario Brothers with graph paper. How is it creating a level now in Mario Maker versus then? Like, is, there, is it a huge time difference? Did it take much longer before with the original Mario Brothers? Yeah, so as you say, level design has changed immensely. As you said, we designed on graph paper, and then we would hand that over to a programmer who would have nothing to do with the original drawing to program that in. To be able to see a course that I designed, it would take maybe the next day before I could see it in game. When you have a tool like Super Mario Maker, you can see your course right there, and so you're able to play it, adjust it, and perfect it to whatever detail that you desire really quickly. And speaking of creating levels, what was the hardest part of creating a level creator simplified enough for anyone to make a level? You know, obviously creating a level that plays well isn't necessarily easy, so what was the process like for creating a user interface for anyone to use? So actually the first prototype that we saw and played with was actually really beautifully designed. It was simple and easy to understand. And we made a point to keep that same aesthetic and style in what we see today.
But of course we were really paying attention to the, the number of buttons on there and would do anything we could to reduce the number even by one just to make it less cluttered and more user friendly and easy to, to see and understand. So we did that through until the end. Did you decide on what objects uh, and Mario game styles to include based on what you had the fondest memories of from just playing Mario as a kid or making Mario all those years ago? It's just as you say, to prepare for um, last year's um, E3 version, we thought a lot about what we wanted to show and include. And of course, I wanted to include all my favorites from growing up. Super Mario Bros., Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario World, and have all the objects and enemies from there. And then as we you know, played with it, um, we of course adjusted to make sure that we had the right items and things like that. But yes, you're right, it did, it did come from there. And so the different functionality and you know objects and things like that, all the interactivity, but all of our staff members on the development team would create things that would make their colleagues smile and have a good time with. And so that's it came from a place of fun. To build on the Super Mario Maker being shown for the first time last year is pretty limited last year, whereas it seems like every time we've seen the game since, there's been more and more and more elements being added to it. Did the scope of the game expand greatly as you were working on it, and you just kept adding more and more things to play around with? Can you describe the uh, development process a little bit more? decided on the spec pretty early and like the basic bones of the game so we knew what we wanted a little bit after last year's E3 but the little details like how they worked and you know, the little tweaks in there that grew bigger and bigger um. So like I said, we, we had the bones of the game decided really early, but we had an idea of the kind of gameplay experience that we wanted people to experience, including the variety and different things that you can experiment with, which continued to expand until today, and we kept adding things that we thought would add to the experience. We were only able to talk to Mr. Tezuka and Mr. Oshino for a limited time on video, but fortunately we were able to still ask them a few questions afterwards and find out some more details about Super Mario Maker. We found out from early on that Super Mario Maker, they decided on making it only a single player game, and they decided to add network functionality right from the start. Something they were really worried about was having too many levels on the servers and then ha making it basically impossible for players to find any levels, so they put a lot of effort so players can find the great levels amidst uh, any so-so levels. Uh, also, to avoid too many coarse copycats, you can't download a level, edit it, and then re-upload it. Level designers will only be able to upload one level at a time and not full-scale Mario Adventures. And while making a level, there actually is a hard cap for the number of objects, but you'll probably never even notice it. There will be levels packed in with the game at launch, and afterwards Nintendo will be able to distribute courses to players as well. However, as for any DLC in the form of extra enemies and objects, Mr. Oshino feels that there's already a ton already, so that there's no plans to add any more right now. This also means that there aren't any Koopalines in the game, so sorry Roy and Iggy fans. And there goes my idea of having to battle them one by one on an airship. As you might have seen, there's now different amiibo suits like the Wii Fit Trainer and Link from the original Zelda. But we asked them if these different suits add different abilities, which would be kind of crazy considering there's about 90 spots for them right now. They did confirm the suits, like the Wii Fit Trainer, will only have the same basic movements and abilities as Mario, but there'll be different sound effects and different animations for clearing a course. Perhaps most importantly out of all of this, they did tell us that Nintendo still has a lot more cool stuff to unveil for Super Mario Maker, so stay tuned over the summer for more announcements. And finally, we asked Mr. Tezuka and Mr. Oshino what their favorite Mario game of all time was. Mr. Tezuka chose Super Mario Bros. 3 because he felt the most proud of that one and it was his first game that he felt was his masterpiece, while Mr. Oshino chose Super Mario World because it was so different than the Lost Levels or Mario 3 when he played it as a kid. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Game Explained for more on Super Mario Maker and all things gaming too.